Hey, Theo, your thumbnails are so clickbaity. I bet that nobody watches more than 10 seconds of your videos. Well, got some bad news for you. If the clickbait gets people to click but not watch, it's actually hurting your channel. Let's talk about how clickbait works and doesn't and some of the misconceptions that I keep seeing about clickbait. So I have a YouTube channel. It's doing pretty well. I have a lot of thumbnails that are are known for stirring the pot a bit. I love doing things like the fake tweet thumbnails, like the red arrows pointing at things, the overly dramatic statements. The goal of these thumbnails isn't to get people who are disinterested to click. And I think that's what people are thinking of when they say the word clickbait. They have this deep expectation that a video using a clickbait thumbnail or title is causing people who are disinterested to click realize the video is about something else and then click off. There are many metrics that matter for a YouTube channel, but the two that matter most are the average view duration and the click through. The click through obviously matters and that's why we're talking about clickbait at all. People have to click your video to watch it. But the part that matters more is the view duration. How far did they watch into the video? Did the clickbait get the right people to click the video? Because if I have a video that's super clickbaity to get all Fortnite players to click, but the video is actually about Halo, and Fortnite players don't like Halo, then all of a sudden, all of those viewers drop and YouTube stops recommending the video. You can have a video with a fantastic thumbnail and title that will get a super high click-through rate, but if the people clicking don't end up watching, that's useless to you. And I think this is a common misunderstanding in the space. There's an assumption that when you make a video clickbaity, only people who fall for clickbait watch it and a bunch of other people don't. And that there's this like, negative stigma towards the creators who use clickbaity things to build intrigue and interest in their content. The video I just published titled Don't Learn TypeScript is a bit clickbaity, but it is targeted at a very specific group, people who are interested in learning TypeScript. If I made a video titled Some Tips to Learn TypeScript Better When You Get Started or The Best Way to Get Started with TypeScript, it would not do anywhere near as well as a video titled Don't Learn TypeScript. And yes, as a result of me doing a video in that way, I might end up with people who already know TypeScript watching it, but it benefits them more too, because they now have this resource they otherwise would not have engaged with, that is a three minute and 46 second video, that they can share with the other developers who are learning TypeScript now. It is so important to package your content in a way that the right people with the right interests and overlap with your goals end up engaging with that content. And the goal of clickbait, especially the clickbait that I engage with in my channel, is to convince the right people to click on the video and enjoy it. If I have a video with a really high click through and a really low watch duration, I screwed up and I keep an eye out for that. There have been a few videos where I definitely spiced up the thumbnail in a way that didn't help the video, but generally speaking, my videos do over 50% view duration, especially the most clickbaity ones. And that's actually kind of funny to me because I felt like as I spiced up the thumbnails, the quality of the the viewer would go down and that hasn't actually been the case. If you can build an emotional engagement from a viewer before they start, it's not too hard as long as the thing they're emotionally engaged with is the topic of the video to get them to hold viewership and watch through. There's a great video about this by Veritasium. I'll put it up here. This video is fascinating because Veritasium doesn't like clickbait. He felt really bad doing it. And it was after a handful of calls with Mr. Beast and other creators in the space that he flipped his framing of this, where it was no longer clickbait in the sense that I'm tricking people into watching a video, rather I am building emotional interest and excitement from the people who should be watching the video. He gave the example of a video about a math algorithm where he could have titled the video, the name of the algorithm, but the video is about the algorithm and how it works. So anybody who knows the name of it already, already knows it and how it works. So if you put the title of the algorithm in the video, you're now rejecting the group you're interested in, which is people who don't know it, and you're not going to interest the people who know about it because the content itself is stuff they already know. If the video accurately described the contents in the thumbnail and title, it would not have been interesting to the people the content was valuable for because the people who understand the content ahead of time aren't going to watch the video because they don't need that content. If you clickbait the thumbnail up, it's like, this algorithm tricked many mathematicians. Suddenly people who might not know about it are going to click, learn it, and benefit as a result. I love this game. 
And it's weird because when I first thought about clickbait, I hated it. I was a well-known dissenter of BuzzFeed. I actually wrote a Chrome extension in a hackathon called BuzzOff that would automatically hide all BuzzFeed posts in your Facebook because I hated the clickbait bullshit so much. But now that I'm on the other side, both advising lots of YouTube channels and running my own, I've actually found a weird fun in trying to find the right combination of elements, both in the video and the value that it brings, as well as the thumbnail and title and how they engage a viewer to click. The harsh reality is I'm not competing with the endless pile of dev videos that people have made over the last decade. I'm competing with Mr. Beast. When you scroll through your YouTube feed, there's a bunch of things you could click, hundreds of them, and I have to get your attention long enough to think about me in my video and then also get you to click it. And that's a massive challenge. And I don't think the people who complain about this stuff have even started to understand it. And I know that because I was one of those people too. Clickbait is important. It is the packaging for what we're building. And if you're not going to complain about Apple's fancy boxes when you open up your iPhone and the amount of effort they put into making it so when you slide the box up off of the container that it has the right amount of force as it does it in a little air pocket holds the phone in the right spot so that it feels premium. That's what we're doing here. It's all packaging. And if you don't like the packaging, then you need to stop clicking on it because this is the packaging that works in the algorithm. All this stuff does is make sure the right people see the video, the right people click the video, and the right people watch the video. And if you're not the right person, let me know. But it seems like the right people are watching my videos, and that's why we're seeing the success that we're seeing. Clickbait isn't successful if the content isn't good, and y'all are complaining about the wrong things.